Hello everybody. Uh, happy Sunday evening. Uh, we'll do some upside down push-ups, shoulder push-ups. Uh, see. All right, let's do this. Okay. Woo. Maybe I should put some long pants on, right? Yeah. Yeah, I apologize for the indecent exposure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Just one more time. Ah. Ah. Okay. Whew. Let's take five minutes break, please. Wow. Ah.
Okay. <sighs> yeah, good evening, happy Sunday evening, everyone. And um, let me see. Uh, yeah, I went to Walmart and uh, bought some weeks worth of food and went to a park and ran on the fro frozen lake uh, nowadays yeah ice melting so uh, but uh, I did run on the frozen lake it is melting so but I stayed along the shoreline so that even if I fall it would not be too deep you know uh, yeah I still not break but yeah <sighs> last year I did fall the glacial pool and there was how deep was that glacial pool that I do not know um, I guess it was I'm like 5'10 right it was more than that that I can tell you because after I fell I did not feel any bottom so I was like swimming right uh, that was interesting and I told this story glacial fall uh, some people die from it okay so yeah, yeah, yeah I would not recommend that uh, it's uh, it was scary that was last year like something like August I don't know September of last year yeah so this time I did not fall it was not glacial, it was just lake, frozen lake. I thought I might fall, ice might break. So what I did was, I only had my car key in my pocket. I did not have cell phone with me. I left it in my car, uh, because in case I fall, you know, I don't want to lose my cell phone, right? So, yeah. So I watched this movie, uh, Sofia, Sofia Coppola, right? Uh, that's kind of Greek Greek name, Sofia Coppola, daughter of Francis Coppola. Um, lost in translation. Uh, sometimes I really enjoy watching that movie. It depends on the mood, right? Sometimes you want to watch slow movie. I mean, kind of you are in low energy level, but if you are in high energy level, you want to watch movie that's kind of faster, right? So I ended up watching uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, same actor Bill Murray, right? I really like his acting style. He's like very aloof, detached, objective, kind of sometimes sarcastic, sardonic. Uh, great actor Bill Murray, one of my favorites. And it's a Ghostbuster, right? Like Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, she, she's very great actor, actress as well, and yeah, I didn't quite finish watching it because I kind of fell asleep, yeah, so, yeah,
Yeah, I'm kind of comfortably blank. So I bought this yogurt. Not sure if you remember this, right? Yakult from California. Uh, Fountain Valley, California. Yeah, I remember uh, this one got imported to Korea, South Korea, like back in 1980s. Okay, so it was hugely popular. I'm sure it's true. And, uh, Mm, exact same taste after all the decades. Oh, it's great. Yeah, and oh. yeah, this weekend. We finished this economics paper, right? So I, I, I guess that's why I can't drink too much this weekend because I'm so happy about it. Big project done. Yeah, so. Yes, it's comfortably blank, sorry. Yeah, but uh, I'll recover from all this. <sighs> I also bought this frozen food, like pot pie. I banke, we get that brand. Oh, I'm a huge fan. Popeye, like beef Popeye, chicken Popeye, turkey Popeye, right? Oh, I'm a huge fan of that meal. Yeah. Also, breakfast Popeye with sausage and eggs, right? Yeah, huge fan. Yeah, great American cuisine. Hmm. So we talked about Korean stories, right? Yeah, I'm sure all the other cultures, or other countries, they have wonderful stories. It's just that I don't know because I'm kind of ignorant, I guess. I, I mean, there are so many different culture, cultures and countries. Nobody can know everything, right? Yeah, so. But I plan to study some more, okay? On my own, mostly Wikipedia, right? YouTube. Like Egyptian mythology, Egyptian gods, Hindu gods, Hindu mythology, and Greek mythology, or Norman, Scandinavian Norman mythologies. Yeah, I'm sure they are very interesting, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Some creation myth, right? I think it was, it could have been Indian or Egyptian, okay? According to some creation myth, the world was created by God speeding, 
saliva, okay? So, yeah, and also that's one theory, right? Yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so in the economics paper, I also mentioned like Arsene Lupin, Robin Hood. Why? Because it's kind of redistribution of wealth, kind of, right? Yeah. So when I was talking about communism, yeah, yeah. Mentioned Jesus as well, like egalitarianism, right? And well, it was pretty fair. Uh, some communism, uh, some goods and bads, right? Uh, I was very pro anti communism, right? Yeah, just to be fair. I mean, like, yeah, social security, that's kind of communism concept, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. even America has that, so. And I was listening to radio when I was driving to Walmart, and they have this wonderful narrative story. It was about Robin Hood, also Three Musketeers, D'Artagnan, right? D'Artagnan, Three Musketeers, like, the apostrophe Anya, I, I, Dar, Artanya, Artanya. So, of Artanya, this French word is like a last name, family name, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, common last name in Europe is like named after a town, right? Like Mary of the Venice, right? Or Herbert Pon Karayan. That's a conductor of classical music, right? Uh, like Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, I guess. So Herbert of Karayan. I guess Karayan is like some town name. Yeah. Yeah. So that Little Mermaid song, yeah, it's like uh, the Cinderella story, yawning, you know, as opposed to under the sea, obscure person. Yeah, some people, not everybody, but some people like me, yeah, I want to be like famous, right? It's basically that, they come kind of yawning, like, it's uh, basically story of these underdogs or under the ground kind of obscure men and women who want to make it big, who want to be famous, like actors, singers. It's basically that, right? Yeah, or well, people like me who want to be a politician, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like David versus Goliath, right? Yeah. So after David defeated Goliath, I think he got hired by King Saul, right? And he became something like a general, I guess, of King Saul's army. And he won a lot of wars. So King Saul 
start to become very jealous of David's success. And King Saul's son, that is Prince, right? Prince Jonathan rescued David, General David, and Jonathan was also general, right? Um, Israel army general. So he informed David, General David, that uh, his father is trying to kill him, right? Out of jealousy. So he warned him and General David ran away and he became something like a bully. Like, maybe not exactly, but like Rocketeer. That's what David became. Okay, he gathered some people who's not satisfied with King Saul, and he did some kind of racketeering a little bit. Okay, like he went to a guy and, hey guy, like we'll protect you, but in return, you have to pay us. Rocketeer and like gangster, right? Yeah, David was kind of like that, okay? And after that, so there's this mean guy who had a beautiful wife, right? And he took that guy's wife to be his wife. David, okay? So, yeah, so he's not like squeaky clean, okay? So a, lot of, a little bit. Can't keep you something like gangster, right? So, and after that, <laughs> King Saul and Jonathan died in a war, and David became the next king. Because he was hugely popular in Israel, so. He had many wives, okay, so. Yeah, what else? I'm sorry, I'm kind of low energy now. I've been running, doing some exercise. Yeah, I woke up and um, I drank way too much over this weekend, so, yeah. Whew. Let's take five minutes, please, okay? And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh.
Uh, I guess we can talk about Robin Hood's story. That was quite impressive. Uh, I heard from the classical music channel in the radio. Um, so, uh, this episode was like, uh, okay, Robin Hood was competing bow and arrow. The target shooting, okay, with a prince. And prince did shoot the bow and arrow, arrow, and the arrow hit the bullseye right in the middle of the target, right? And people thought, okay, how can Robin Hood defeat this prince? It's just impossible, because it was a perfect bullseye. Then surprisingly, Robin Hood, what he did was, uh, he shot an arrow, and it split in half of that prince's arrow. And also hit the bullseye. So, yeah, very creative story, right? Yeah. How about Tartanian story? Well, Tartanian and three musketeers. He was not one of them, okay? So, uh... I guess I used to, used to know, but I kind of forgot, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so this, it was kind of comical. The three markets get here one by one. Uh, they were kind of messing with this young guy, D'Artagnan. Yeah, you and I, we, one by one, those three musketeers, okay? One by one, they, they challenged D'Artagnan, okay? He said, they said basically, yeah, I don't like your attitude, your young, young guy, I, kind of punk, right? <laughs> Give me one second. Let me wash up my eye. Yeah, so one by one, they challenged Tartanian, like, tomorrow we'll meet and do some fencing, like, uh, battle. And so, yeah, they originally planned to kill him, one by one, okay? Just each of three musketeers, okay? And later on, Tartanian was a very smart young man, so they kind of, he kind of persuaded that, uh, yeah, let's be friends, okay? And those... He was very witty, so those older three musketeers, you know what? We kind of start to like you, so join us. Yeah, and they became very good friends. Yeah. But Daitanyang was very good at fencing too. Yeah, remember when I was in Korea, there was this uh, animated cartoon, TV show, I think it could have been made by French people or Americans, okay, but it was dubbed in Korean language. Yeah, I, I, I did watch that. It was back, back in 1980s, okay, on television. And it was very good. And Daitanyang and those three musketeers, they were actually uh, in this animated version. They were dogs, okay, dogs who can walk and talk, yeah. I remember watching that. Yeah, fencing. So, young Horror Sherlock Holmes, right? Uh, yeah, there's some parts like human sacrifice is horrible, right? Uh, but other than those parts, it was a very good movie, actually. Uh, other than those two parts, that's kind of too violent. And, but other than that, yeah, I, I enjoyed watching that movie, Young Sherlock Holmes, right? Yeah. And uh, when it comes to Arsene Lupin, yeah, it was a good movie, mostly. Again, okay, there's one part I did not like, violence, okay. Yeah. But other than that, it was good. Yeah. 
Hmm? Most interesting. Hmm. Yeah, these days I do watch news a little bit, but not much, not as much as I used to, okay. Yeah, mostly I just do Wikipedia web surfing, um, like mythologies, history, literature, that kind of stuff. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of blank because this weekend, yeah, I finished that economics paper and drank a lot, so I'm kind of like comfortably blank. Um, yeah. Let me take off this long pants. It's kind of getting too warm. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, I turned off the hero. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take a break from riding for a while because, oh. Yeah. And from mathematics too. Oh. Mm. Well, let's take five minutes break, shall we? Alright. Ooh, it's, yeah, it's kind of warm. Yeah. Okay.
Well, <sighs> yeah, my my brain now is like comfortably blanked out because I guess that economics paper is a kind of brain dumping session, so my brain is now emptied. <laughs> And um, I think it's very beautiful paper because I wrote a lot of, I mean, drew a lot of diagrams and they look very pretty. Uh, yeah, and uh, the final chapter, Narrative Economics, I wrote in such a way it is kind of like a theatrical, like screenplay a little bit. I think it's a good idea. Okay, let me grab my cell phone and maybe read some parts of that to you. Now to economics. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. Uh, mm. <sighs> well, <sighs> mm. I was uh, basically making some criticism about uh, Professor John Maynard Keynes, okay? So, one Mr. Professor Keynes also erroneously said, Oh, it is okay for big government to overspend, going to deep debt. Yeah, spend and spend and spend like there is no tomorrow. And we respectfully object. Government issue bonds sometimes, blah, blah, blah. Also, Mr. Keynes once said, Hey, there's nothing wrong with economic bubbles. Me likes bubble gums. It's so chewy. Me likes it. So yeah, let the bubble pop. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. But having said that, Mr. Karl Marx erred. He thought, hmm, let's see, me thinks there is no God. Oh yeah, I do subscribe to materialism. And me thinks, I think that humans are nothing but animals. A biological machinery. That's what a homo sapiens is, really. So yeah, if people are well fed, they'll be happy. Just like farms and animals. So yeah, oh yeah, hell yeah. Mandatory redistribution of wealth, yeah. Tax the rich, feed the poor, yeah. Heaven on earth, yeah, hallelujah, yeah. Any objections? Oh my goodness, I, yeah, I was being very... Well, it's like a novel, basically, okay? So it's a comedy, so it's comedic writing, so it's kind of, there's some uh, blasphemy element there, some uh, insult, offensive, but, uh, well, jokes are jokes, right? So, yeah. But.
Oh, there's some typo here, huh? What if I say that's what I should have wrote, written it down? What, 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 that's fine. I, I don't want to keep editing, okay? So, yeah, there will be typos always, right? What if I say, Communism is nothing but the latest edition of egalitarianism. Eh, I'll just leave it. I don't want to keep editing, right? Uh, it just takes too much effort, so... Yeah. Wow, it's getting really hot. Oh, boy. We'll take five minutes, okay? It's getting very hard. For some reason. Whew. Okay, so right outside this this window, there's tree growing. That's like what what tree is that? That's uh, and that tree is taller than me. Okay, a little bit, maybe six foot, something like that. Okay, and that tree is a willow tree. Okay, it's growing right outside that window. So when all the snow melts. I'm gonna have to pull it out or chop it down. Why? Because, uh, in both botany, okay, biology, I learned that trees, they have mostly horizontal root system. And those roots are two to three times longer than trees height. And my friends advised me that, yeah, trees can damage the house. Yeah, so. I believe that, so uh, I, I'm gonna have to. When all the snow is melted, yeah, I'll take that tree out <laughs> because if it's six feet tall, its roots at least twelve feet. Okay, and I don't want that intrusion by the tree roots. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to chop that down. Let me get some thumbs.
What else? So we talked about stories in Korea, right? Traditional fables, legends. Um, I guess we can talk about well, French Revolution. I did mention it. Uh, we were talking about like egalitarianism in the paper. Uh, Korea, uh, well, well, well uh, so French Revolution. Um, it was largely a failure, and also French Revolution. It's kind of like communist, communist revolution kind of use of violence, and what happened there was basically elites deceiving, misleading working class people for their own purpose, just like communist revolution. Communist revolution is elites overthrowing established government in order to take power to themselves. That's what the communist revolution was, okay? Uh, it happened in North Korea, China, Soviet Union, Cuba. They deceived people so that they get popular support in order to take power to themselves. So that's what communist, revol communist revolution was, and that's how the French Revolution was. It's just elites misleading common people, deceiving them. They did not distribute wealth and power to the people. That, that, that never happened. They took the power and money to themselves. Elites. Okay. So uh, basically, there's this term, useful idiots, okay? So that's how it was. Okay. And BLM, I think it's the same way. Okay. They get take a lot of donations, right? BLM organization. Do they keep distribute distribute their money, like reparation money, whatever they call it, to African Americans who actually need them? I don't think so. I think they take the money to themselves. Kind of fraudulent. Well, that, that's my impression. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, but uh, all those popular uprising that uses violence, uh, it's basically uh, the elites deceiving people, like in January 6th. President Trump used his supporters uh, in order to perpetuate his power. That's just anti-democracy, okay, kind of dictatorial, and after that, after January 6, he abandoned them, his own supporters, okay, so it's deception, that's how any use of violence, like revolution, right, it's always like that, okay, it's elites deceiving common people to use them for their own political purpose, to perpetuate the power or to overthrow the other established government to take the power to themselves. It's not about giving power back to the people. No, no, no. That's not how actually it is. Those violent revolutions, it's all about elites taking power from another elite. Okay. It is deception. And French Revolution was one of the instances. Commun like Communist Revolution, BLM, January 6th, I think it's all the same thing. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think. Right? I did not write about that in this paper. Uh, but I don't want to keep writing, editing, okay? I, I just want to move on. And yeah. Yeah. 
So, some Republicans still support Mr. Trump as a politician. Uh, I guess, well, it's their political freedom, so I respect that. Political liberty, and it's, I don't think they are deceived by Mr. Trump. Everybody knows, even Republicans, they are not dumb people, they are smart. I, of course, they know in their heart that what Mr. Trump did in January 6th is very wrong, immoral. But uh, there are some Americans whose priority is like politics is more important than religion or morality. Okay, uh, Some Republican Party state leaders said when uh, their congressman or senator in that state, I don't know, I don't remember what state it was. Yeah, because he voted to convict uh, President Trump. The Senate trial, whatever, and then the gentleman said, yeah, we did not send him to do the right thing or whatever. Okay. So some Democrats, some Republicans to them, uh, politics has higher priority than religion, than morality, ethics. Everybody has different priority. I'm just describing them to you. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, although that's what I think, but <laughs> without passing any judgment on them, um, I'm just describing some people are like that. Okay, so they know what President. Trump did was wrong. They are not deceived by President Trump. Although some people were in January 6th, right? Uh, but they know he really messed things up in January 6th. Uh, but to them, that wrongdoing of Mr. Trump is not that important. Then what's more important to them? Yeah. Political consensus inside of the Republican Party, and then some figurehead, and President Trump is all their god, so they stick with him. His wrongdoing, I guess, to them is not that important. Which was a little bit shocking to me. So I was disappointed. So I left the party. I'm no longer registered Republican anymore. Not after that. So I'm independent, un unaffiliated. So, yeah. And we understand everybody has different priority, but I was quite surprised how Republican people reacted to January 6th, and they, I appreciate their loyalty to Mr. Trump, and uh, he has some goods, I get it, and I respect their political freedom, their priorities, everybody's different, but I do not want to be a part of that. The pro post Gen six pro Trumpism. Okay, so uh, that's how I call it. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's why I got out of the whole party. Although uh, nobody's perfect, right? Yeah, no human organization is perfect. Uh, but uh, I realized that uh, I cannot represent them anymore as a can political candidate. Okay, so. but they are nice Republicans. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. And they're nice to me. <laughs> okay, I still have many friends in the Republican Party. They're cool. Right. It's different your politics. They, I guess, just, just want to be different from Democrats, I guess. Um, which is understandable. They have served their function in society. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. But Democrats the same, same way too. I mean, 
Yeah, LGBT issue, right? Some Democrats are Christians. Yeah. <laughs> Look, no further than President Joe Biden. He's Catholic. He's Christian. But it seems he's one of those politically oriented people. Of course, he's politician, right? Yeah, so it seems to him politics has more priority than Christianity because he's pro LGBT, right? And LGBT ideology is expressly forbidden in Bible. So to Mr. Joe Biden, Bible is not as important as uh, his politics. So Republican Party, Democrat Party, they're like mirror image, anti-parallel, right? Yeah, I don't think one party is better than the other. Okay. Yeah. I did not know. Okay. And when it comes to abortion, Bible never mentioned abortion. All right. So how then Christian Republicans? What's their logic? Uh, they define abortion as a murder. And yes, in Bible they say, yeah, thou shalt not kill. Okay. Uh, to some Christians, especially in the Republican Party, uh, to them, anti abortionism is the most important part of their Christian belief. Some Republicans, like President Trump, who say he's Christian, Right? And also, Mrs. Commissioner, that I'm competing against, uh, yeah, they're both pro life, and, but Mrs. Commissioner and President Trump, they are like, thou shalt hate thy enemies, which is against Christianity. But, to Christian Republican conservatives, some of them, uh, they kind of define Christianity as anti-abortionism. And they ignore other teachings in Bible, like thou shalt love thy enemy, Jesus, right? They conveniently omit that kind of doctrines in Bible. Why? Because to them, Politics is more important than their religion. And it goes both ways. Some Democrats are like that, some Republicans are like that. Of course, not everyone. Democratic Party, Republican Party are like that. Uh, but some of them are, okay? Uh, which is a little bit disappointing. And But, hey, people are people, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I don't, nowadays I don't pay too much attention to news because it's just not as interesting as history and other knowledge, right? Mostly in Wikipedia, okay, so, um, yeah, contemporary news, well, the thing is only like 1% of people in this generation will be remembered, right? Uh, so... In the news, they have like big, like New York Times, Washington Post, whatever, okay, the so called pundits, your Fox News, whatever. Yeah, most of them will not be remembered in human history, okay, be because they're just not that good, okay, they're just mediocre, mostly, 99% of them, okay. They may be hugely popular nowadays, but 10 years, 100 years later, they'll be forgotten. They may have some Wikipedia webpage for them, right? <laughs> but not many people will pay attention to them because they're just not that good. They're not exceptional individuals, right? Uh, but some of us are, right? And some of us will be remembered forever, okay? Yeah. Uh, how about me? I, I don't know. I, 
I'd like to be remembered, but if I'm dead, then I'm dead. Unless there is afterlife. Do I believe in afterlife? Uh, I'm kind of agnostic about that. Uh, it'd be nice if there's heaven. Hopefully there's no hell, alright? I, I don't like the concept of hell, eternal hell. No matter what a person did in their lives, uh, eternal hell, yeah. I'd rather just have them disappear after they're dead, okay? Some bad people out there, okay? After they die, yeah, it's probably best if they just disappear. It's up to living forever in hell, right? Yeah. So did Jesus walk the talk? Did he love his enemies? Sometimes I so I think, like, do what I say, not as I do. Yeah, he, Jesus kind of went against his own teaching sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes in New Testament, what Jesus said, I feel he was very angry and very hateful of his enemies. I think he hated his enemies sometimes. But teaching was good, okay? Yeah, love your enemies, okay? But I don't think he always followed that, his own teaching. I guess he was only human, huh? Sometimes he got angry, sometimes a little bit violent too, okay? And I also don't like the fact that he went to crucifixion. Okay, I would have liked, preferred if he did not die young and he escaped. But he knew about it, right? Conspiracy against him. I would have preferred if he escaped and ran away to some foreign countries and keep living. I would prefer that as opposed to him just succumbing to crucifixion, okay? But that's my opinion, okay? So I like Bible, but some parts of Bible I disagree. Uh, so but I'm Christian, but at the same time I'm kind of secular too. Yeah. Yeah, some parts of the Bible is very violent. Very, very violent. And yeah, I don't like those parts. Human sacrifice, they kind of, there's some there, okay, in the Bible. Even some cannibalism. Okay, yeah. I don't like that part. Yeah. Okay, well, but in general, I think Bible is a good book, good teachings. Yeah. Hey. All right, let's take five minutes, please. Hmm. Yeah, my body has cooled down a little bit. That's great. Okay.
Oh, let me turn the heat on. So let's talk about Christianity, okay? I think it's a good topic to talk about. Um, was it necessary that Jesus died? Okay. Well, we have four saints, right? Buddha, Jesus, Socrates, and Confucius, right? Two of them died kind of untimely. Socrates and Jesus. Now, Christian logic, yeah, Jesus died for us, for our sins, is a savior. Uh, I respect that belief system, uh, but I don't like human sacrifice, okay? That's good Christian concept called live sacrifice, okay? Yeah. Human rights called interpretation, what is life sacrifice? Yeah, pain and suffering. Like, or labor to serve people. Yeah, love your enemies, pain and suffering, right? Copium sacrifice, basically, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's a good concept. Uh, but Confucius and Buddha, they lived long, they were not prosecuted, persecuted by government, like Socrates and Jesus did, okay? It's Socrates and Jesus, uh, basically they were falsely accused of being a corrupter of youth, right? Uh, but it's politics, okay? Elitism, because there were some competing forces so they wanted to eliminate the competition. That's why they killed them. Politically speaking. Uh, because Jesus, Socrates, they were popular. So, their competitors were losing audience, money. Okay? If people are following Jesus, how about Jewish synagogues? They are not going to go to those Jewish temples, synagogues, and if they lose audience, they lose money, right? So it's turf war, it's a market competition. That's one way to look at it. Socrates, same way, okay? There are competing schools of thoughts and like government officials, okay? They're losing money, so losing power, so they eliminated their competitors. That's one way to look at it, okay? Uh, so they both died, unfortunately. But Buddha, Confucius, they lived very long time. They didn't. They died naturally, as far as I know. Okay, I could be wrong. Okay. And Confucius, Confucianism, and Buddhism. <coughs> they were remembered. And will be remembered forever, just like Socratesianism and Jesusianism. So I don't think it was necessary that Jesus and Socrates died the way they did. Okay. I would hope, I would prefer if they did not die. If they, I, I would prefer that they escaped persecution and survived. I don't think it was necessary that they died to propagate their teachings. Look at Buddha, look at Confucius, Lao Tzu. Their philosophy for survived for thousands of years without them dying, without death. So if teaching is good, you will survive. I don't think it's necessary for this teaching, lessons, philosophy, to propagate, I don't think it's necessary that they die. Because one way to look at Christianity is this, okay? Uh, it's kind of like publicity stunt, you know, some person died, like Jesus. So, he became 
very famous because he died innocently. Because he died innocent, uh, his teaching become more famous. That could have been, but then is it necessary that a saint die innocent? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not at all. So that's the part. This version of human knowledge deviates from traditional Christianity. Okay, so we don't like human sacrifice. We are more, yes, pro-life. We are not talking about abortion here, okay? Yeah, we, we, we are about life and we don't want death and we do not want human sacrifice. So we have to, I, I reject that traditional Christian doctrine, okay? I don't think it was necessary to just die, okay? But that's what I think. Is it heresy? Sure. <laughs> it's good that we are living in a good age. Back in the days, oh boy. <sighs> yeah. Really just persecution, right? Back in the days. <sighs> Even today. Middle, some Middle Eastern countries, if they criticize Prophet Muhammad Allah, uh, they might get go to jail for it. Okay, some Middle Eastern countries. Okay, because that's how it was back in the days in Europe. Blasphemy, sometimes heresy, sometimes uh, yeah, punishable by death. So back in the days, Europe was like that. So then. Middle Eastern countries, uh, well, I think they are in a different stage of human evolution. And so today, some Middle Eastern countries, like Arab countries, Islam, okay, uh, they are about 200 years or 300 years younger than European countries. Why? Because the religion of Islam is not that old compared to Christianity, okay? Uh, religion of Islam, yeah, about 700 AD, right? So it's a relatively younger religion compared to other religions, okay? So uh, that would be my guess. Yeah, uh, I'm not insulting them i'm just describing the big picture in human history where the timeline evolution stage stage they are okay because that's how european country used to be religious persecution mandatory religion that's how christianity used to be, used to be. catholicism in Europe. It was mandatory. And no objection allowed, heresy, punishable by death, and the Protestants and Catholics, they used to kill each other. What year? Even after the Renaissance. We talk about like 1700s, 1600s, 1500s, okay. Uh, Christianity used to be very violent and mandatory no freedom and that's how Middle Eastern countries are, some of them, okay. Back in the days in Christianity, uh, they were violent, okay. Even some Protestants too, all right. But Christianity, modern Christianity, kind of evolved out of that use of violence, mandatoriness, lack of freedom, okay? And it took about 300 years to evolve out of that for Christians. So, how are Middle East? 
I don't know how long it will take for them to evolve out of that. The mandatory religion, lack of freedom, also, yeah, misogyny, sexism. That's how Europe used to be, okay? Uh, so how long will Arabs, Middle Eastern countries, Islams, Muslims, how long will it take to free women and to have religious freedom? I don't know. But social change happened very slowly. Why? Inertia of time, custom, and tradition, and Human society's evolution happens slowly. Sometimes centuries, sometimes millennia. Okay. For thousands and thousands of years, yeah. Geocentrism, flat earth hypothesis. For thousands of thousands of years, until Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, right? People thought Earth is flat and Sun revolves around the Earth. Geocentrism, okay? Uh, Galileo, what year was he? 1500, I guess? 1580, about, right? Yeah. He was in a Catholic trial. Back in the days, churches were kind of governmental branch, branch. Okay? Church was part of government, okay? Catholic, European, back in 1500s, okay? They were part of a governmental agency, okay? Churches, Catholic churches. So, uh, they brought, they charged Galileo as a heresy. So Galileo said, yeah, you, you guys are right. Sun revolves around the Earth. Okay. I'm glad he did. Because I, otherwise he could have been killed. I'm glad he relented, okay. It was a lie. He did not believe in uh, geocentrism. But to save his life, yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, sure. Geocentrism? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm glad he lied like that, okay? Because uh, he would not have been good. I'm glad he survived. Yeah, he lied. He said what people wanted to hear in order to save his own lives. Life, okay? He lied. And I'm glad he did. I'm glad he survived. Yeah. So, we are living in good era, okay, where at least I am in a safe place, Alaska, America, okay, there's religious freedom in this country, and that's one of the reasons I came back to America, and, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, freedom, right? So, how long will it take for Middle Easterns to evolve so that there be religious freedom and women's freedom? I don't know how long it will take. Okay. Maybe a couple of hundred years. I don't know. But eventually they evolve out of that, eventually, okay. Islam is still relatively younger religion, so it is evolving, and uh, there's some positive news. Uh, Saudi Arabia, they're kind of thinking about allowing women to drive, okay, slowly, slowly. Yeah, we see some positive signs in Middle Eastern countries. I think they are moving forward, okay?
But so social change, it, 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 there's no way out. Okay, it's this change very slowly. Okay, social change and violence does not work. Okay, some communist revolution, all this because they want rapid social change, right? It, it does not work that way. Okay, and so Mr. Karmax did not know. Okay, it's violence, it just doesn't work. Okay, so, um, yeah. I deeply care about women in Middle Eastern countries. Okay, I want to see them being freed no mandatory hijabs, burqas, and and I want Middle Eastern countries to have religious freedom too. I deeply care about them. I've been to Middle East, yeah, Afghanistan, and one more country. Okay, it could have been Tunisia, some North Afri North African country. Yeah, just switching the boat when I travel in Europe, okay. Uh, it could have been Mozambique, I'm not sure, okay. I deeply care about them, the future, yeah. So nowadays, like ISIS, right, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, a lot of wars going on in Middle East. Like between like Israel, Palestine, Iran, Iraq, a lot of wars going on, right? That's how Europe used to be back in 1700s. That's how America used to be back in 1800s, Civil War, right? Yeah, Europe, European history. A lot of wars. You have war of roses, you have religious wars, you have war between countries in Europe. A lot and a lot, a lot of wars. That's how Europe used to be. That's how America once was. Couple of hundred years ago, okay, and that's how Middle East is right now. So they are in different stages in evolution, okay. So uh, will they ever move out of that warism? I think so. It may take a couple of hundred years. But eventually, yeah, yeah they, they'll evolve out of that. Why? Because warism is not a good ideology. It's too destructive. It's just lose-lose situation. Everybody loses when there is a war. There's no winner of war, right? And, and that's how Asia used to be too. China, Korea, Japan, they used to fight each other all the time, okay? We talk about like, yes, hundreds of years ago, okay? This warism, violenceism, right? Uh, but they evolved out of that, right? More or less, okay? Yeah. So bad ideology, like warism, violenceism, okay, yeah, it eventually die out because there's no good in it, okay. Uh, it may take some centuries, but eventually they move out of it, okay. It, Middle Eastern, okay, okay, yeah, they will, yeah, there's no doubt. All right, we'll take five minutes break, okay. Ooh, it's getting chilly. Ooh. Okay, I think it's time to watch this. It comes 
smells salty. Sweaty a little bit, so yeah, I've washed this later. Uh, oh boy. Okay. We're we'll talking about history, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so back in the days, in American history, politicians used to be extremely smart people. Like Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Abraham Lincoln, they were very well educated. James Madison is kind of like Solomon, right? Yes, philosophy king, right? James Madison, very well read, very well learned man. He wrote most of the U.S. Constitution. Okay, Bill of Rights and stuff. He is very well learned man. Okay, he studied very hard and very smart. Philosophy, history. Okay, uh, they knew it all. Thomas Jefferson too. Okay, and they are very good writers as well. That's how American politics used to be back in the days. Smart presidents, very, very educated, okay? They are, they are exceptional ones, right? Yeah, the founding fathers. Uh, give me one second, in my laundry. Uh, So, can it ever happen again? Yeah, why? It happened before. 
Yeah, philosopher kings, well, that's what I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to run for president in year 2024, okay? Whether I get elected next year as senator or not, I will run for president again, right? Yeah, no problem. Because I'm a very well-educated person, okay? And I like learning. Yeah, so philosopher king, science king, okay? Scientific president, philosophical president. It happened in America before. James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, okay? So it can happen again. Because he, history re repeats itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, so American history, there's ups and downs, ups and downs. Some dumb presidents, like <laughs> not so smart presidents, like President Obama, President uh, Trump. How about President Joe Biden? Uh, we'll see. I think he's doing fine, okay, so far. But the three president, President Obama, President Trump, President Joe Biden, I think they are mediocre at best. Quite average, okay. There's some good and bad, okay. Uh, but uh, I would not be too proud of them, all three, okay. Because they are no FDR, JFK, Lincoln, De Jefferson, Madison. They are not one of them. No. They are not George Washington, okay? Yeah. This is Obama, Trump, Biden, okay? Kind of mediocre, okay? Uh, but Mr. Joe Biden, uh, we'll have to see because he just got sworn in like three months ago, right? Yeah. So it's his news, so we'll see. Um, but I think he's doing a decent job, okay? Mr. Biden, President Biden, okay? Yeah. And... So... Some Republicans in Alaska support candidacy of uh, Mrs. Commissioner, okay? I don't want to say her name, okay? So... Uh, why? She's not that well known, okay? So, I mean, I only mention names of very well known people, okay? So, I'm kind of protective. Okay? Yeah. So, so Mrs. Commissioner, uh, she, she kind of like President Trump. And there's a, in my opinion, there's a big mistake that he's her role model because he failed. He failed in the re election. So, yeah, but political freedom, okay, so, uh, it, so far it does not look good, okay, the way her campaign is going, yeah, she adopted a failed campaign as her role model, and if she keeps, she and her people, her campaign go, that, go like that, modeling after a failed campaign of President Trump, year 2020, then they will lose, just like President Trump lost, okay? Because it's proven to be failing model, okay? My model, my campaign is this, okay? In order to pass a law, you have to work with Democrats. I'm more conservative than liberal, okay? And after I get elected, will I go back to Republican Party? I don't think so, okay? I need some political independence, okay? If I win, hypothetically, okay? I don't think I'll go back to the Republican Party, okay? I'll be just independent, okay? Yeah, because I'll do my own thing, okay? If I get elected, okay? And um, so basically, they will be always Democrats. They will never change, all right? About half of Americans will be more liberal than conservative. That's not going to change, right? So in order to pass a law, you have to work with Democrats. Okay. I'm more conservative than liberal. Okay. So yeah, you have to work with Democrats so that you know, to pass a law because half of people in the Congress will be, always be Democrats. Nobody can change that. So to pass a law, you have to work with Democrats.
It's just how it is. But Mr. Trump and uh, com Mrs. Commissioner, their model is that uh, uh, it's too belligerent. Okay, they are too far right, and that kind of politics uh, is something that I disagree with. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. In order to solve a problem, yeah, we have to work together, right? And emphasize common denominator, commonality as opposed to differences, right? Yeah. There's something I learned in some classes when I was part of the Republican Party. Yeah, there's some classes that I attended. Okay. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it's not. It's not. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like election classes. Okay. So yeah, I did have an opportunity. So the Alaska Republican Party is a great party, great people. Okay. So yeah, there's wonderful, very educational events, right? Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Mrs. Commissioner, she's kind of funny, okay? I listened to all her interviews with major news network, and uh, she said something like, she's anti-DC insider, like she said, I'm not pro-DC insider. I'm like, what's she talking about? I, I guess she kind of want to hide the fact that uh, she actually was Washington DC insider, and that's why Governor Don really be hired her. Okay, I guess she's kind of trying to hide that fact that she was a DC insider herself. Uh, so I don't think it's necessary that she characterized herself as an anti DC insider. Why? Well, first of all, that's not true. She was a DC insider, and that's why she was hired by Governor Don Levy. And I don't think there is anything wrong with being a DC insider. I think it's a good thing. That's why Governor Don Levy hired her, because she was a DC insider. And I don't think there is anything wrong with this being a DC insider. Okay? It's a good asset. But at least that's what Governor Don Levy thought. Yeah. But as a commissioner of department administration, I don't think she did very well. So. I don't think it was a good decision to hire her. Yeah, I think it was an error, mistake that Governor Don Levy made to hire her, okay? There's nothing wrong with being a DC insider, okay? Uh, but in her case, uh, uh, I don't think she's a very honest person, okay? And she is too partisan. And she's, her Christian belief well, it's good. There's nothing wrong with have a strong religion, religious value. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, in my opinion, to be a politician, Let's say she get elected next year, okay? As a U.S. Senator from Alaska. Her job as a U.S. Senator representing Alaska, she should represent everyone, not just Christians. Okay. Uh, and also not just conservative Republicans, okay? She should represent everyone, all right? And that's why I think I, I, I can do a better job as a representative of all Alaskans, okay? Because, yeah, uh, when it comes to Christianity, I'm kind of half and half. I'm half, half secular, half Christian, so 
I respect even atheism. I think they have good function, good role. And I respect all the religions, including Islam. Okay. And I respect Democratic Party, Republican Party, conservatism, liberalism. Yeah. So she represents very well Christian Republican conservatives, okay? Yeah, that's what she is. She represents them very well. But that's like how many percentage of Alaskans are Christian conservative Republicans? I guess about 30% at most. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is this. 55% of Alaskans are independents. Okay. But not all of them vote. <laughs> okay. 25% Alaskans are Republicans. Oh, they vote, right? 15% of Alaskans are Democrats. They do vote too. Okay. But 55% of Alaskans are independents. Many of them are apolitical. They are not interested in politics and they don't vote. Okay. And I appreciate them. Why? Because, yeah, politics, dirty business. So they're kind of Puritans, clean people. We need them. I appreciate people who don't vote. Okay. Yeah. Then what's the chance of me getting elected next year? Uh, it's very long shot. Yeah. But it's possible, right? Yeah. Yeah, new primary system, what is interesting? Jungle primary, okay. Yeah, so back in the days, like only Republicans can vote for in Republican primary. Some other states are still like that, okay. Only Democrats can vote for Democratic primary. But jungle primary, Alaska, very experimental, okay. Yeah, it's like even Democrats can vote for Republican candidate and vice versa, okay. Yeah, very interesting, right? Yeah. And also ranked voting system. I think it's like a voter can have number one, number two, number three, number four. Four choices, okay? In that priority. Ranked voting system, okay? This is very interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah? So how is Governor Dunleavy doing as a governor? Some good and bad, okay? He is also too much Republican, too much conservative, okay? Uh, he, he's kind, he kind of give me impression of a little bit too far to the right, okay? And, but I think overall, he's decent, okay? I don't think... I think he's decent. He, I think he, he's, he's been doing pretty well as a governor, okay? <sighs> but he became a little bit too much of a relativist. Okay. But I think he has done pretty decent job. Okay. So he, Governor Dom is running re-election next year. Okay. Is there any competitors in a gubernatorial race next year? I don't know any. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Let's say there's some other candidates in gubernatorial race next year. Would I vote again for Governor Dunleavy? I did uh, about three years ago. Okay. But will I vote for him again next year? That I'm not sure yet. Why? It depends on other candidates. If I think a new candidate challenger in the gubernatorial race, if I think that person is stronger candidate than Governor Dunleavy, I might vote for that person. Okay. Yeah. With Governor Dunleavy, um, I mean, like everybody else, good and bad, right? Uh, so, but I think he has done a decent job. Okay. Uh, but his hiring practices, he tend to hire people who are kind of far to the right, okay? Like Mrs. Commissioner, for example, okay? And also Mrs. Director, basically her campaign manager, okay? Campaign advisor, all right? <clears throat> Spokesperson. They both used to work for Governor Donnelly, okay? And I think they're kind of far to the right kind of people. So, um, yeah, too much partisan based politics. Okay. And also uh, his high on practice, uh, some, some elitism. Okay. So, uh, those will be my criticism about God Bueno Don Levy. Okay. I like him personally, okay? He's a he's very nice guy, cool. And very effective politician too. He's smart, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, we'll let, take five minutes break, okay? All right. Yeah.
Okay. How about Congressman Dan Young? Yeah, I, I met him many times. Uh, he knows me. Governor Dolivy, met him many times. He knows me too. Uh, Congressman Dan Young, uh, I think he is very effective politician, okay? Uh, would I vote for him next year? His re-election? I think I might. Yeah, I, I, he's a very smart man, okay? Congressman Dan Young, yeah. Uh, of course, he's Republican conservative, but I think he has ve very good wisdom. Good, very, very good wisdom, okay? Because I, I did listen to his speeches, okay? Get last year, year before, okay? Uh, he seems to be a very wise man, okay? So uh, I, I, I tend to think that uh, he has very good judgment, okay? Uh, yeah. How about Senator Des Sullivan? Yeah, he knows me. I know him. We met many times. Okay. Uh, he's cool. He's a nice guy. Uh, and but he's not running next next year because U.S. Senator their tenure is like six years. Okay. Yeah. Federal level. Okay. So I think so. <laughs> Yeah, because Senator Lisa Mikulski, she got elect re-elected in, back in 2016. Okay, so she's running next year. Yeah, six years, yes. Uh, Senator Desa Ribbon, he is cool. Uh, there's some parts I disagree with him, but also very smart man, effective uh, politician, and uh, I think he's cool, okay. So, Senator Desa Ribbon, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, he... he uh, he seems to be a very smart man, okay. How about Senator Lisa Mikorsky? Uh, you and my number two choice. I'll be my number one choice, of course, okay. Yeah. Will I vote for myself? I think so, yeah. And Senator Lisa Mikorsky, uh, some parts I agree, some parts I do not. Um, I mean, she's one of those politicians that people, Republicans, refer to as rhino, Republican in name only. And I think that's correct characterization of her, okay? And she is kind of, she does her own thing, okay? Which is like me. Yeah, she's kind of independent, okay? She, she's not that conservative at all, okay? Uh, Senator Dan Sullivan and Senator Lisa Mikulski, they both supported Oil and gas in Anwar, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. That's where Mr. Heimerkorth lives. Okay, Mr. Heimerkorth is against development. Okay, uh, but uh, two senators they both supported Anwar and they both objected pebble mine. I'm pro pebble, but they're both anti pebble. Okay, so that that point I disagree with both of them. Okay, and Senator Dan Sullivan expressly supported Senator Lisa Mikorsky's re-election. Okay. Uh, but current, uh, uh, but uh, most Republicans in Alaska support uh, Mrs. Commissioner, her candidacy, okay. Um, because they are Republicans, okay, and uh, Mrs. Commissioner, she's very traditional Republican, okay? Yeah, pro-gun, pro-life. That, 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 all check yes, yes, yes. Traditional Republican party platform, okay? I respect that, okay? But, uh, Senator Lisa Mikulski, she's more like, uh, she does her own thing, okay? And in, in that sense, she's very independent. Uh, then why did he join the Republican party? Maybe for political reasons, I guess. All right. So, um, two things I disagree with her. Uh, she's pro LGBT. I'm not. And she's anti paper mine. I'm not. I'm pro paper mine. And I'm anti LGBT. Okay. 
Well, I, I don't object people, I object the ideology of LGBTism, that's all. Um, and I agree that bullism, violence against LGBT community members is wrong. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's wrong to bully anybody, right? Yeah. And what else? There's this congresswoman from Georgia. What's her name? Republican Party. She believes in like QAnon, whatever, right? Yeah. She's way too far to the right, right? And uh, Commissioner, Mrs. Commissioner, I don't think she is as far right as uh, that Congress lady from Georgia. I do not remember her name, okay? But uh, um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They're interesting characters in politics, right? Yeah. So next year, yeah, a lot of elections next year, like gubernatorial election and congressional election and senatorial election, right? Next year. Even very interesting year next year, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. What else? Oh yeah, last night I had pizza and it was nice, but it's been in the refrigerator for a year, so it tastes like refrigerator. So I ate just a little, okay? And after that, my mouth, that refrigerator taste is steady in my mouth for a while, okay, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not drinking because I drank way too much this over this weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Some stories, well, Korean stories, yeah, I kinda of ran out of repertoire. Uh, uh I'm still learning history, right? So yeah, not much stories really left in my brain. Yeah. So bow and arrow is great because they are recyclable. Uh, guns. Well, if you are living alone in Alaska, outback country, right? You have to buy ammunition, right? Because Gun bullets, they are not recyclable. So, but bow and arrow, yeah, they are, they are recyclable. And you have this uh, bow and arrow that kind of horizontal, right? With trigger, right? Yeah, those are great hunting tool because you can recycle your arrows, right? You'll never run out of it, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Then you can live off the land, right? Yeah. Mm. And the different technique to preserve meat, right? You can put in the salt, right? And um, dry it, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well. I guess we can take like five minutes and then um, talk about something else.
Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, Mrs. Commissioner, I don't think she's too bad. I don't think she's too radical. Uh, if she gets elected next year, uh, she might do a decent job, actually, okay? Uh, but I detected some dishonesty in her campaign, okay? And I mean, if she gets elected next year, she will serve Senator six for six years, right? And she would be my last choice. And actually, she, I I won't vote for you know rank system number one to three four. I just vote for myself as number one, and I will not vote for anybody else. Okay. Uh, she's a very hardworking person, but to me that does not mean anything. Yeah, she went to Harvard Law School and watched her DC job, federal government, some intelligence community, and, uh, but to me, that doesn't really add anything, at least in my view. Why? Because she's hardworking, she's knowledgeable, I'm like, yeah, so what? Okay. And I really dislike the dishonest part, dishonest part, and also too much elitism. And uh, hopefully she changes. Right? Yeah, I pray for her okay? so that she become more honest candidate. All right, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, because the, what I stand for, my campaign stands for is honesty and quality of work, not quantity of work. Some relaxation, creative solution, right? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary that politicians work like 80 hours a week. I'm against that. Okay, if I ever get elected, I will not work 80 hours a week. I will only work 40 hours a week. Okay, quality of work as opposed to quantity of work and, um, and solve real world problems, right? Working together with diverse groups of people and um, actually solving problems, right? I don't think I will spend too much time watching on this thing, okay? Why? Because I don't think what they do up there, we're down there, all the laws, past this laws, legislation, voting, ah, those laws, I don't think they're necessary laws, okay? Then what we are doing as a senator, I will solve Alaskan problems, which is not that many, okay? Yeah. Some crimes, yeah, let's get rid of it. Some homelessness, yeah, let's solve that and uh uh yeah pebble mine and war yeah development also some brand new industries too like seafood industry i'm kind of wondering yeah, there are a lot of edible seafood we can export to China. They used to, okay? So, what I, one thing I disagree with Republicans is this, also Mr. Trump, okay? China is, uh, I don't, so some Republicans see China as an enemy, okay? Like President Trump. That's not how, how I see China. I like China. I love China, okay? And, China, 
do I see China is China is a good international trade partner. Okay, they eat the kind of seafood that Americans do not eat. For example, with Japan, Korea, China. Okay, they eat squid. In America, yeah, you have calamari, right? Fried calamari. Hmm. But Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, they eat a lot of squid. They have a lot of different cuisine, culinary arts, menus that's cooked with squid. And they eat a lot of bull kelp, seaweed. Americans, well, some of them eat them. I did. But it's not very popular food item. Okay, so there's a huge opportunity for Alaska to export seafood to China, Korea, and Japan and make money, international trade. You can create jobs here. Okay, those are the things I'll be focusing on if I become elected as U.S. Senator. Okay, it won't be about ideological debates. No, well, maybe sometimes as an education, right? But uh, mostly, it will be about creating jobs and eliminating crimes and homelessness. Okay, so yeah, that will be my focus. Right? Pro-abortion, anti-abortion, yeah. Those are more ideological issues, so it's not that practical issues. And... Um, I may just recuse myself and not vote for either, okay? When it comes to those bills, laws, the anti-abortion, anti-gay, LGBT, those laws, I may just recuse myself because I don't have time for it. Okay. Those are the ideological issues, right? Yeah. I've been more focusing on practical solutions, okay? Yeah. Okay, we'll take five minutes break, and um, I don't quite feel like drinking, okay? I drink way too much this, over this weekend, so, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm being boring, okay? Yeah, if I'm sober, yeah, I'm not as entertaining as, as I'm drunk, so. Okay, let's take five minutes, please. <clears throat> yeah, if I become senator, probably I just stay in Alaska and what about votes in Washington DC? I will participate in a Zoom meeting and um, most likely, yeah, I won't vote for many bills, okay? They will just waste all my time, right? Because I have to read the bill, right? I'm not going to read those bills, laws. I just probably not vote for those things, okay? Because to me, it will just waste of time, okay? I'm not going to study their legislative proposals, bills. No. I'm not going to read them, and I'm not going to vote for any of them, okay? Because uh, they will just waste all my time, okay? So, yeah. Mostly, I stay in Alaska, and will I have res legislative proposal? Most likely not. I'm not going to vote for any laws, and I'm not going to write any laws. Then, what will I do as a senator? I'll solve problems in Alaska and create jobs here. I'll use my visibility and power, political power, to solve problems in Alaska. We don't have that many problems, by the way. But, yeah, we focus on creating jobs. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are what I'll be doing as a senator. Okay? Yeah. The legislation, I'm not a huge fan, okay? We, don't you think we have enough number of laws already? Right? Let other people take care of that, okay? Yeah, it's important, right? Yeah, some updated laws. Yeah, laws need to be updated. Yeah, but let them do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not interested in legislation, all right? So, I'm a pro-observer. If I become president of the United States, it will be exactly the same. 
<coughs> legislation, well, president is not supposed to do legislation anyway. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, we'll take five minutes. <laughs> Should I put this long pants on or off? It's kind of warm. I'm getting a little sleepy too, okay? So, uh, yeah. It could be our last segment for this episode, okay? Okay. I can't even decide whether to put this long pants on or off. <laughs> Low energy now. Uh. Mm. So, maybe I should run for gubernatorial election instead of U.S. Senator, huh? Well, the thing is, Governor Dunleavy, I think doing, he's doing a good job, and I don't think it's necessary. I think he's doing a good job in general. He's not perfect, but uh, I really don't, do not want to run against him, because I kind of like him, okay? So, <laughs> I would not be motivated to run against Governor Dunleavy, okay? I don't want to, okay? He's a good man, and he's, I think he's a decent governor, and, uh, yeah, but as a senator, if I get elected, I will not be doing any lawmaking, so, yeah, they call it legislator, legislator lawmaker, right, but in my opinion, uh, I don't think, I think they're kind of wasting their time, okay, making laws, don't you think we have enough laws already? <sighs> I don't think it's necessary, okay? Yeah, so I will not make any law and I will not vote for any laws, okay? Because it's just waste, waste of everybody's time in my opinion, okay? How about budget? Well, let them take care of budget, okay? I'm not interested, right? Yeah. I will more focus on creating job in Alaska, okay? Yeah. Education, all that stuff, okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. Kind of like preacher. <laughs> a little bit. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we film it and put it in the YouTube, I guess. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Education. Right? Yeah. Uh, 
and connect the dots between different sectors, investors, private business to create brand new industry and stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Farming, right? Yeah. Mining. And then I will have to work with other legislators to persuade them uh, kind of like, you know, oil and gas, pebble mine should go forward, okay. Yeah, like Environmental Protection Agency and uh, Army Corps of Engineering, okay. Yeah. And state government, federal government to approve pebble mine. All they gotta do is this. Just say yes. Robot stamp, okay? Yeah, just approve. That's all they need to do. Pebble mine to go forward. After that, yeah. They will, the rest will be done by professionals. Miners, investors, mining companies. They will take care of the rest of the work. They will build mine in Brist Bristol Bay. Okay? Yeah. Just, just say yes. Robot stamping, okay? That's what they gotta do. Federal, state, government, okay, different agencies. All, all they are, all they need to do is say yes and monitor the progress to make sure no salmon dies. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, it, it's easy as that. All right, so. Yeah. If some salmon dies, and then they need to correct and do things differently. Okay? Hey, Alaska is gold mining place, where copper mine, coal, oil and gas, okay? Yeah, we can make a lot of money off of that. Precious metals, okay? Yeah. It can be the environment in some session, because we have technology for that, we have filtration, all those, okay? So. I heard they can make gas out of coal too, okay? Yeah. Great technologies. Okay. So. How about global warming? I don't think global warming is too bad. I think it's a good thing actually for Alaska, okay? So it will open up the Arctic Ocean for trade route. Huh? Uh -huh. So. How about polar bears? We'll protect them, no problem, okay? Well, we can farm them too, okay, yeah. And make big money out of that. Hmm? No problem. Bears, they are happy if they are well fed. Okay. And in Alaska, we have a lot of lands. Okay, so we can have safari, bear farm, no problem. Bears are happy when they are well fed. They're very easy to please. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we don't have to worry about polar bears, okay? We farm them. And brand new industry, bear farming, bear safari, bear zoo, and also we harvest bear fall, bear meat, and also bear gold bladder too, to export to China. Japan, Korea, okay? Yeah. You can make a lot of... Bears are very easy to farm, okay? You just need to feed them, okay? Yeah. And they are social animals too. Bears, they fight only when the food is rare. Also, they fight when there are not that many females. Okay? Now, bear cubs. We can rent bear cubs as pets. When bear cubs grow too big, we take them back.
Mother bears, uh, they become available to male bears to mate when they lose their bear cubs. Okay, so bear farming. Let's say we take baby bears away so that we rent out baby bears as pets. Okay. Then those mother bears will be available again for mating. Okay. Yeah. Will there objections to this? Maybe some animal, animal rights advocates, right? Uh, but no problem. Why? Because we'll treat bears very human in very human fashion. They like it. Even MRI advocates, okay? Because they will see bears being very happy. Bear farm place, it will be very wild, wide, big place, safari. They will not be in cages. And they will be very well fed by tourists. Tourists will bring food to feed bears. We take from food from restaurants, okay? All the leftover food, okay? Yeah. Bears, they don't get sick when they eat rotten meat. They eat salmon from last year. Dead salmon, okay? Yeah. They don't get sick. Bears are kind of like pigs, okay? They eat everything, okay? And they, they don't get sick, alright? So, you can harvest bear meat for... Baby bears, we rent them out as pets and take them back when they grow too big and continue farming. We have safaris, right? Yeah, of course there will be fence line, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. it'll be very interesting, right? But do I really want to do all that stuff? Not really. So do I really want to be elected as senator next year? And not really. Why? I don't want to work too hard. Okay, so then why am I running? Yeah, I, I like running, so hopefully I don't get elected. <laughs> but ideas, yeah. May I write some articles, okay, as an education, so that some future generation can start doing that. But do I want to do them them myself? Not really. Okay, it be too much work. Okay, I don't want to work that hard. Okay, so yeah. I appreciate environmental activists, animal rights activists, they play a good role in society, checks and balances, right? We work together right? to make sure farmed animals would be happy. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when it comes to energy, oil and gas, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Global warming, climate change, I don't think there's nothing to worry about. Okay, so uh, uh, we understand their concern, uh, but uh, I think their concern is mostly based on sentimentality as opposed to science. And um, yeah, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of getting sleepy a little bit. And uh, we take five minutes break, okay? And then we have like 30 minutes left in this footage. And uh, yeah. Ideally, what I want, uh, Mrs. Commissioner, she seems to be very popular. She might get elected. What I want, I pray for her and her people so that they run honest campaign. Okay. 
then I have no problem on get, or getting elected, okay? And less elitism, okay? Hopefully they turn around, all right? Then I have no problem get, or getting elected, okay? But for as of now, for what I've seen, uh, our campaign has been dishonest, all right? And too much elitism there too, okay? So I pray for her campaign so that they become honest and less of elitism, okay? Because I don't think elitism and politics mix very well, okay? Yeah. We need elites, but elitism in politics, I don't think is a good place, okay? We need elites in other places, okay? But not in politics, okay? So, uh, and how about Senator Lisa Mukowski? If she gets reelected, I have no problem there. I think she's very smart, okay? So, yeah. And she, I think she represents Alaska very well. Right? She's kind of independent, so. Yeah. So do I want to get elected, your senator? Well... Some days, when I have higher energy level, yeah. But as of now, I'm kind of sleepy and hungry, so <laughs> I'm kind of in the mood that I don't want to get elected. <laughs> okay, yeah. It depends on the day, at my energy level, okay? I realize it will be a lot of work, and I don't want to work that hard, okay? So maybe 40 hours a week we'll do, okay? I don't know, okay? Yeah. All right, we can find this, please. So, uh, I think I can drink a little. Yeah, yeah, so what I mean by elitism is not good for politics is what I mean by that is this, okay? If they work 80 hours a week, we need people like that in some other places, okay? But in politics, I don't think it's a good idea to work 80 hours per week as a senator, as a president, as a governor. Because what happens when we work 80 hours a week, we can't lose sense of touch of the real world, real people, okay? And I advocate for quality of work, like work smarter, not harder, okay? Uh, 
to be more creative. All right? Yeah. Very important. Creativity. Creative solution. Okay. That's what my campaign stands for. Okay. So yeah, if you work too much, 80 hours a week, we need people like that, like some business CEOs, okay? But as a politician, I think they should work only 40 hours a week, okay? So that they can think things through, have some leisure, and come up with some creative solutions, okay? But that's how I would do it. Yeah. Uh... Hopefully I don't get elected, okay? Why? I think I think I know about it. Ah, it was just too much work, okay? Then why, why am I running then? If I don't even get want to be elected? It, I take it as my job to run every two years, okay? Why? As a student and as a teacher, it's like going to school to educate myself and educate others, as a student, as a teacher, okay? Because it gives me this opportunity running for an election, okay, to interact with people, to share knowledge, ideas, okay? So I take that as my my mission, my job, okay? Come God-given mission, okay? I take that as my duty, okay? It's knowledge sharing, okay? And to learn from others and to educate others to go both ways. That's why I'm running. Okay. Do I want to get elected? Not really. Not really. Okay. But if I get elected, uh, basically it will mostly be about working with people, like governmental officials, okay, <clears throat> phone call, Zoom meeting, whatever, <clears throat> and connect the dots, investors, governmental officials, okay, yeah, I mean, Pebble Mine is already heavily invested, okay, so, It's like business abortion, okay? All the invested money went away. Because they did not prove it, okay? And that's a waste, all right? So, I think Pebble Mine should, should have gone, gone ahead, okay? And, uh, and some other projects like farming, Right, harvesting edible seafood and exporting to uh, Far East Asia, right? Yeah. Bear farming, yeah, it's about connecting the dots, okay? Connect investors and business people. If this law getting in the way, then yeah. I try to get rid of those laws as a senator. So I will have to work with legislators, yes, to get rid of bad laws. Right? Yeah. So that people can work, farm bears. If there is any law forbidding that, then we have to get rid of those laws. And I have to work with other legislators, have some meetings, convince them, and then state and federal legislators and uh, government officials and animal rights advocates and yeah, we have to work together, right? Do I want to do that? Sure. Not really, okay, I think you do too much work, right? Yeah, but can I do that in 40 hours a week? I think so. So I, I think I might be okay, okay? But I don't want to do it. I, I would have to have uh, some other ideas to do it. Okay, so. 
So yeah, Senator Lisa Murkowski or Mrs. Commissioner, I would rather see them do it, okay? So yeah. Yeah, I write to media outlet or we'll have interviews, right? So I share ideas like this. Oh, I'd be very glad to see Mrs. Commissioner or uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski if they get elected. Uh, yeah, let them improve my ideas. Oh, they'll be ideal so that I don't have to do it myself okay yeah there's no secret in my campaign okay oh let them do it I'll be more, more than happy to see them do it okay yeah that's why I'm running okay it's about propagation of knowledge ideas okay yeah. it doesn't have to be me I'd rather not do it myself okay I would be very happy to see you be more ideal. I prefer Senator Lisa Mukowski or Mr. Commissioner get elected and implement my ideas. That would be my preference. <coughs> but I don't think they'll do it. Why? Uh, they're very traditional politicians, okay? So uh, I don't think they're interested in solving real world problems, like creating jobs. And they work 80 hours a week, kind of elitist. So they don't have creative solutions. Okay, they're just traditional politicians, okay? So I don't think they'll do it, okay? If there's nobody to do it, I have to. Okay? But it will be reluctant to resolve. Okay. So now it makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. <sighs> what kind of candidate would say these things like this, right? Oh yeah, I'm running for U.S. Senate, but I do not want to be elected. Why? Because I don't want to work that hard. But I think these ideas can be implemented without working 80 hours per week. I think 40 hours per week as a U.S. Senator will be good enough to make this happen. And I don't think anybody else can do this. Okay, so yeah, I'm running. Okay. I think it's my job to do so. It's like if you're a student, if you're a teacher, do you want to really, do they want to really, do you really want to go to school one day Friday as a student, as a teacher? Not really, because, but we go to school because we have to. It's the right thing to do. That's the same attitude that I'm having about candidacy and election, okay? Do I really want to do it? No, but I take it as my duty, mission, job. So reluctantly, because I think it's the right thing to do. At least to run for an office. It's like, yeah, we reluctantly go to work, school, to teach, to learn, to serve others, although we don't really want to. We rather go retired, retiree. But we do the right thing, right? So that's the same approach I'm taking. Yeah, I'm running for US Senate or something else as a job. Okay. That's that. Huh? Yikes. Oh boy. Oh boy. So last year when I had an interview with the local journalist, okay, uh, about 2.1 thousand views and it's top there, okay? About two weeks ago, I had interview, okay? About 3.3 thousand, okay? Views. And it stopped there, okay? So yeah. 1.2 thousand viewership increase within a year, okay? So I'm being more known. Yeah. 
two newspapers rejected my articles. Okay, so I put that in my campaign website. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with the flow. You know? Oh, no problem. Yeah. I kind of like the fact that actually they rejected the two newspapers, rejected my article. Why? Because uh, I, I, I rather put that in my website. Okay. So I'm glad they rejected, okay. So next year, senatorial campaign, election. If I don't get elected, I'll be very happy. If I do get elected, I do it. My preference, I'd rather not get elected. At least that's how I feel tonight. Because I'm kind of low energy, okay? My preference is not being elected, okay? So if I don't get elected, I'll be very happy, okay? If I do get elected, I'll do it. Alright, so that's how I feel tonight. Maybe some another day, okay, yeah, if I'm more higher, high energy, then yeah, maybe I want to be elected. Duh, it depends on my energy, energy level, okay. Am I a Shinegan candidate? I kind of am, okay. Yeah. So why am I such a low energy? I ate some bits and pieces of pizza, right? And some potato chips. That's what I had today. So I'm kind of hungry a little bit. During the weekends, I practice fasting. Okay. So. Okay, uh, we stop and restart. I'm not sleepy. I'm not just a little bit sleepy, but I had a very long nap. Okay, and I just started drinking, right? So we stop and restart. Okay, yeah, we continue. Okay, see you in like five minutes. Thank you.